uh, we had seen that in the architecture. So NVIC means nested vector interrupt controller. Uh, so NVIC is the method of prioritizing interrupts. So if the microcontroller is getting more than one interrupt, it has so many uh, interrupt signals. Maybe uh, timer one is sending the interrupt. Timer two is sending the interrupt. ADC one is sending the interrupt. ADC two is sending the interrupt. Everything is coming to this uh, CPU. Then the, what the CPU can do, it can get confused. So many interrupt, which one I should uh, process first, which one I should uh, process second and so on. So we have to set the priority. So that is what uh, this NVIC is doing. So it's setting the priority to interrupts. It helps improving the MCU's performance and reducing interrupt latency. So what is this interrupt latency? So for example, I get this uh, ADC2 request fourth at the last. So it needs to wait long time in the queue. Now everything is in the queue, right? It's in the line. So I got the timer request one first and the timer request two second and the ADC request, ADC one request first and third and then the ADC two request fourth. So now I should not get confused as a CPU and get jammed. So I should still process this request. So I just, for example, I have the priority to this ADC two, then I will immediately execute this request and then I will complete this one. So here I reduce the delay. So this ADC2 request is very important one and it's not standing in the queue and then I am avoiding the delay. So all these things we can set in this NVIC register. So NVIC ensures, sorry, this is uh, R, e ensures that higher priority interrupts are completed before lower priority interrupts, even if the lower priority interrupt is triggered first. That's what I said. So we got the request uh, interrupt from timer one first, but we got the interrupt from ADC two at the last, but this has the high priority and this has the low priority. So which one has the high priority? We execute that first. So that is what I said. And it support, uh, supports nested interrupts. So nested means one inside another. So uh, I don't know if you study about the C language. So we have the if loop and then we have inside the if loop, we have another if some conditions and we have some statements and we have it's finished. So this, this is the parent if and this is the child if. So we call this as a nested if one inside another. So it can be multiple ifs. So inside here, I can have another if statement and I can execute some other programs. So this is just like a, how to write the programs. So in C language or C++, we have this nested if or nest, nested program uh, logic. So this is also same. So one interrupt inside this ADC2, you can have sub interrupt one more and you can have one more sub inter interrupt. So this uh, NVIC is also supporting the nested interrupts. And Cortex M3 divides 256 level priority into high and low segments. So they have 256 levels. So uh, that is, I think, 2, two power 16, uh, which are called um, preemption, preemption uh, priority and sub priority. Uh, it means there, uh, there are two priority controls in STM32. Um, this is different from one only one interrupt level. So here I am talking about only one interrupt level. So there can be multi-level interrupts. And we will see about uh, these uh, sub-priority levels and priority levels when I talk about interrupts uh, later on in the lecture, in the upcoming weeks. Uh, preemptive priority means uh, the preemption happens when a task is abandoned in order to handle an exception. So you cannot really abandon any task, uh, uh, but just you have to follow the priorities set by the user. And sub-priority is also called a response priority. Uh, so we can use, if you look at the reference manual, 
uh, you can see this uh, keyword to set up these kind of priorities. And the entry and exit of these uh, exceptions. So uh, here again, um, some more uh, theory. I do not want to read this, uh, but um, at least here, just how it works. When an exception occurs, the current instruction stream is stopped and the processor accesses and the exceptions vector table. So exception means we are asking uh, not to do something. This is the exception. Um, so then the vector address of that exception is loaded from the vector table because when exception occurs, it look at the vector. It looks at the vector table, and then uh, the vector address of that exception is loaded, and then the exception handler starts to be executed in handler mode. Then exception handler returns back to main. So this is just like uh, everything is uh, interconnected. So when an interrupt is fired, the main code context is saved. Uh, that is the main program uh, to the stack. So you remember stack register. Now you know why we are using stack register. And the processor branches to the corresponding interrupt vector uh, to start executing the ISR handler. I also told you what is ISR. The same thing actually here, uh, whenever we have the interrupt, we stop the main program and then we are executing the interrupt first. Uh, but uh, we have to have some, we have to store the current status of the main program and then we go to this uh, interrupt and then we complete the execution of interrupt request and then we come back to the main program. That is the complete logic. Um, so here I have given uh, with some more explanation. At the end of the ISR, the context saved in the stack is popped out. The end of the ISR means, so after you complete the interrupt service routine, you are just jumping back to this uh, main program. So the processor can uh, resume to the main uh, program or main code instructions. However, if a new exception is already pended. So before you execute this particular except uh, the interrupt request, you already get another interrupt. Then what will happen? The context cushion pop or skipped. So it will start to execute the second interrupt. And the processor handler, the second ISR, without any additional overhead. This is called a tail chaining. So one after another. So you are getting one interrupt. Before you complete that, you already got another interrupt. So you cannot really jump back to the main program. Instead, you have to do the second interrupt processing. Then if you have another third interrupt, then you have to process that. And it requires six cycles on Cortex M3, M4 processors uh, totally, and which is a huge speed up in the performance and enhanced the interrupt response time greatly. So here I had given some example. Uh, so here you can see IRQ1, that is the interrupt one request. Here you have the interrupt two request. And here, this is the base CPU. So how the core is going to execute now? This is the foreground. Foreground means what? That is the main program. So now I am getting this interrupt, right? The clock signal is high. So then what I am informing to the main program, the CPU, I got the interrupt. So we need to handle this. So immediately it will push this request into this uh, CPU and then it will start to process this ISR1. Uh, sorry, we will put the status into this ISR1 and then we will start to execute this IRQ1. So in this period, IRQ1 is active because we are executing this. And then later on, what will happen? We have the tail chaining. It means we have another request immediately. So IRQ2. So then I am putting the current status again into this ISR2 service routine. And then I'm executing this IRQ2. So now IRQ is active. So now again, I get from the status register. This is popping up after I complete this. This is popping up. So I am getting the same location where I stopped the main program. So then I start to execute the main program again. This is the main program. Then everything is okay. 
So I stopped at maybe a uh, code number 10,100. So I just jump back to the same location and then I start to locate this, uh, execute this main program. So <laughs> the tail chaining can accept maximum six cycles. So if you want to read more detail about this, how to handle multiple interrupts, I had given the link here. So I, re I refer so many different sources. So you can also go into these sources and read more detail. And the NV configuration provides a fast response to interrupt requests, allowing an application to quickly serve incoming events. What is incoming events? The, they, they are interrupts. So whenever some event happens, exception happens or interrupt happens, we are responding immediately and we are executing them. So we are giving fast response. How we can do these fast response? Through this NVIC. So NVIC will help you to set up the priority. Which one is first, which one is next, and how to stop uh, the main program and so on. A separate unit called CFG is, uh, is in charge of combining several interrupts onto the same interrupt line. Yes, um, so it's a straightforward, I think. Uh, done on three steps. Uh, how can we do that? Configure the exception in vector table and configure the NVIC registers and configure the peripherals. So these all are, when you do the programming, you will do that. So how can you configure uh, in uh, registers and peripherals? And this is the example uh, vector table, exception vector table. 